you get you get that Carolina light, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, we are live. So, hi everybody who's watching. Uh, this is Dana Sitar from writersbucketlist.com and I'm really excited today to kick off our interview series and talk with one of my favorite writers and bloggers. She's someone who's been an inspiration to my own work since early in my career. C. Hope Clark. Hope is a freelance writing expert and author of the Carolina Slade Mystery Series. She lives on the bank of Lake Murray near Chaplin, South Carolina, where she not only pens mysteries, but also manages FundsForWriters.com, a weekly newsletter service she founded that reaches more than 35,000 writers and has been recognized by Writers Digest and its annual Best Websites for Writers for a dozen years. Thanks for joining us, Hope. Oh, glad to be here. Happy to have you. Uh, so I'm going to get right into it. In this series, we're talking to writers about the struggles and barriers they face throughout their careers and how they've overcome them to become the amazing writers they are today. Um, so my first question for you is, it's my understanding that um, you mention on your blog I've read and some other places that it was about a decade-long journey for you to writing and seeking publication and finally publishing your first novel. Is that right? Uh, it was probably closer to like 14 years. <laughs> oh, wow. So tell us about that journey. Yeah, well, and I say 14 years because it, it started and stopped. Uh, as I lost confidence, regained confidence, learned more things, um, you know, you, you kind of feel your way along when you're first learning how to write and get into this business. and. I, I just tried a whole bunch of different things before I finally got the novel put together, I guess you could say. That that and finding your voice, I think that's real important when you're you're starting out writing fiction is finding that voice and it just doesn't happen overnight. And was that, um, that 14 years kind of working on that, was that really with this, your first novel, Low Country Bribe, in mind or um, were you working on short stories and other other ideas and throwing them out until you finally got to this one? Um, it was mostly Low Country Bribe. I, I have another novel that I've half written that never saw the light of day. Uh, I, I don't ever mention it. I mean, it's <laughs> I think it was something where I was trying to be really, you know, angst-ridden and ominous and all this, and uh, and I, I tucked it aside. But uh, no, Low Country Bribe was is like my first love because part of it is a little bit autobiographical and uh, I just kept going back to it. Uh, I, I threw it away twice before I, I picked it back up and took it seriously. So. so what were the barriers and struggles that you were facing in writing that um, that made you throw it away, start over and, and take a while to come back to it and finally follow through with it? Uh, well, like I said, voice number one, and, and I was lucky. I had I joined a critique group that I fell in love with, and I still belong with. I, I've been with those people for a decade, and uh, they kept telling me it just wasn't good. I mean, it just wasn't really exciting. And I was writing it in third person, and I turned around and changed it to first person because it, it just came to me in the middle of the night, seriously, sat up in bed, one of those aha moments where uh, I write funds for writers in first person all the time. You know, my, my essays and my motivational pieces, and I thought, why don't I try and write my fiction the same way? And that's when it took off. That's when it really started coming together. And uh, it just took a while for me to, to form the characters and, and, and find enough twists and turns in the story where I felt it was marketable. But um, I think a lot of it is, is getting enough um, confidence I shopped for agents forever. Um, it took 72 queries before I landed one. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> and then it took her 18 months to find a publisher. So it, it just was not an overnight success story by any means. Was it, um, would you say it was a big roller coaster, the agent and querying and uh, publication process? Or did you feel a lot of low points in that process then as you were dealing with rejection and? and waiting for your agent to find a publisher? Um, oh, it was frustrating once I had the agent because I thought I had actually climbed a little bit of that ladder because I had an agent. You know, it's so hard to find an agent. And uh, once she got it and had trouble selling it, and we came close several times. Uh, uh, Berkeley almost picked it up. Tor almost picked it up. And it, it, it 
we'd come close and then it would just crush me when we, when we wouldn't make it and uh, so when we finally landed it it was almost anticlimactic uh, <laughs> it started and stopped it started and stopped mm -hmm. and uh, when I finally got it put together I think what kept me sane was um, I kept writing I just kept writing more stories to focus and keep my attention on so I wasn't worrying about what my agent was doing and who was rejecting me and as a result when I signed up with the publisher they were quick to say what else are you doing and I said I have another one already written <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah, so it's it, really it that, that really helps they love you when you can say that right yeah once they find something that's marketable and they can keep going along with that yes so I've actually heard this and it sounds like you're almost alluding to it a little I hear you give this advice to writers all the time um, whenever someone asks the question of how do I get motivated, how do I make time to write, how do I finish writing my novel, you just say just start writing, <laughs> just make time to write no matter how much it is. Um, what is it about that piece of advice that you seem to be so passionate about, that that's really what you're, what you, the message you really want to get out? I, there is no magic potion. That's what I keep trying to tell people. It is nothing more than sitting down and writing. Even when you don't feel like it, um, even when you feel like you totally suck as a writer, I don't care what it is, sit down and just, just write something. And it's, it's what I did. It worked for me. I would come home from my day job and uh, I was putting in 10 and 12 hour days and coming home and giving myself 15 minutes to write and told my family you do not interrupt me when I'm in that little 15 minutes and they uh, they took me seriously and it, after about 90 days of doing that it was a habit and that's what it takes is getting that habit it's like brushing your teeth before you go to bed kind of thing it's it's I have to do it um, and I would actually be drop dead tired and say I gotta get my 15 minutes in when when I realize whoa I gotta have it I mean it, this is cool you know uh, uh, this part of my everyday uh, and it's it's to this day I, I credit that for jump starting my writing because I had to groom that habit before I could take it seriously and it, once you start writing even if it is a bummer of a day I mean I have bummer bummer days I, you know, I, um, I've got a new novel I'm trying to get off off to springboard off square one with new characters and it's tearing me up but every night I sit down and tinker with it and play with it and make myself put in my time and I always walk away with something achieved y you do you do you just gotta make yourself put the butt in the chair that's so great to hear I think a lot of people are gonna be happy to hear that you were able to get that first novel out with that 15 minute a day habit um, it's it's something that I try to convince people of and it's hard for them to see it I think so it's good to see that you completed that and have achieved what people are looking to get to with that 15 minute writing habit so that's also my message to everybody <laughs> sit right. down and write 10 to 15 minutes a day you really can do it um, do you think that it was more difficult to write a novel length story in that way um, I don't myself I don't do a lot of long form writing so I can't say if I could write 15 minutes at a time. I can certainly put 15 minutes into writing an article or blog post at a time. But um, well, I'd say some I people started might find off, it hard to fathom. It, I grew into it. I think when I started writing, I didn't know what I wanted to write. Um, I've never been a short story fan. Um, but I actually, when I decided to sit down and start back to writing, because I'd put it aside for a number of years, I actually picked up poetry. You know, it's like God forbid. Um, it's so bad. I was, <laughs> but it was getting words on a page and thinking creatively that that kind of broke the dam. And I I realized, okay, you're no poet, and uh, started writing essays and freelance pieces. And for 15 minutes a day, oh, you can you can do those short pieces all day long. Um, and then I would when, once I started on the novel, then you can write a couple of paragraphs or you can edit the previous chapter in that 15 minutes you know it's just getting your head into the groove the fun thing is is that you look up and 30 minutes have gone by or an hour has gone by and that's what you're trying to do is get into a groove to where 
yes, you lose track of time, and the you know the mental juices start flowing, and and it starts working. That's that's what you're you're aiming for. And once you get into that mode, and you sit in the chair and say, okay, now I'm writing. Your your brain will pick up on it, and you can do 15, 30 minutes a day and still produce a novel. Awesome. So it's just a matter of training your brain to work that way. Know when it's writing time, just like training your family to know when it's writing right. time. <laughs> All right. So um, to wrap up, just one more question. What is one action step you'd like to encourage everybody who's watching this interview or video to take after they finish watching? Oh goodness, um, it's it's the same one I tell everyone, and that's that's right every day. Uh, I mean, I just I've lived it. I, it worked for me. I've seen it work for other people. I I preach it at conferences, and I can't tell you how many people go, "Wow, I thought I had to wait till I had two or three days, or I had to wait till I had six hours, or whatever, or, or the kids were in school or out of school, or which, you know." I hear all these excuses. Um, after Christmas, after my daughter gets married, I could just go on and on and on what I've heard. And no, 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 you you write now. You, you know, you just sit down and do it, and you do it a little bit every day it's to the point where it's it's your habit. And anybody who knows me, and I, not just online, but my neighbors, my family, know that when my light's on in my study, I'm not to be disturbed because Hope's over there writing. Uh, uh, I, I think once you develop a habit of doing it, everybody starts respecting you for it. And uh, until you respect it, they're not going to. That's great. That's a really good piece of advice about it, too. I think people break that habit easily with the excuse that it's family, but it's really a matter of your own mindset of making sure that you respect that time so that they will as well. So awesome. I hope that everybody does that as well. And uh, so tell us what you're working on now and where everybody can check you out. Oh, wow. Right now um, I finished uh, Carolina Slade's third novel. It's in the hand of the publisher. It's called Palmetto Poison. And I've started a new series. They've asked me to consider a new series. It's um, tentatively called, the first book is called Edisto Diamond. It's set on Edisto Beach in South Carolina, um, which gives me great tax advantages to go take a vacation at the beach. Um, <laughs> um, but it's a, a new character called, her name is Callie Morgan, and she's an ex-detective, and that's about all I can say right now. Um, but it's, Congrats uh, on that. It's fun. It's fun developing a new character because I was so entrenched in, in the old characters. Um, it's challenging, but, it, it, but it's fun. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Hope, for your time. Um, everybody who's watching, you can learn more about Hope at chopeclark.com and sign up for Funds for Writers, and I personally recommend it. I'm a subscriber myself, and it's awesome for fiction writers, freelance writers, um, everything you want to do in writing at fundsforwriters.com. And you can learn more and connect with the DIY writing community at writersbucketlist.com. Sounds good.